Due to the insecurity challenges the country currently faces, Katsina and Dora Emirates councils in Katsina state have suspended public activities for the forthcoming Eid al Kaber. However, the two Emirates urged residents to use the Salah period to pray for the peace in the state and in the country. And in government, the media office uh, to the former Senate President Bukola Saraki faulted claims by the presidency at the that the 8th Senate did not organize a security summit to tackle the challenges facing the country. He said, there has been an attempt to push false narratives aimed at shifting blames of the rising insecurity challenges confronting the country on the 8th National Assembly. Well, joining us to discuss this is Colonel Chinedu Ohonda. He is a former colonel uh, in the Nigerian army and Peter Egbedian, who is a security expert. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Good evening. Great. Thank you. Good evening. Colonel, I'm going to start with you. Um, so, yeah, of course, this claim is being tackled by uh, the media aide of uh, the former Senate president. And, and, and uh, he's talking about the fact that, you know, they actually did organize a security summit under the 8th Assembly to address insecurity. But... At this point in the country, should we be talking about who had a security summit or who didn't? Should we, in 2021, amidst the banditry, the kidnapping, Boko Haram, cattle rustling, ethnic um, tensions in the north, south, east and west, should government officials and former government officials be at this point trading blames? Okay, Peter, if you heard me, can you take that question and then I'll ask Connell the next question. Oh, yes, um, I heard you, and um, Connell, sorry for um, the weather the parents over there. So, to answer the question, I, I don't think this is, this is the proper thing to be discussing at this point in time on a national level. Um, and again, the fact that the president, the president's spokes, spokesmen have shot themselves in the foot by, by speaking or by putting incorrect um, fact, or let me say alternative fact in public domain, and they've been, rebu they've been rebuttals with evidence of the truth by um, Sarkis and AIDS. It's just a shameful thing to see that our, our presidency is being distracted by, by frivolity. If you ask me, this is the frivolity, it should not be the issue right now. There are more pressing issues, and it's a sad reflection of the state of affairs of our country. Um, so, Colonel Honda, I, I please respond if you can hear me. I'm asking, what exactly do you think is going on with the whole back and forth on uh, whether there was a security summit or not? Is, is a security summit the answer to our insecurity problems in 2021? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that shouldn't be what the president should be asking for for now, because when you look at it, is becoming too late of what you're supposed to be, supposed to be proactive in whatever. Now that this security level has reached the point whereby the bandits, the kidnappers of students are taking it as a business venture, making money out of it instead of, and they know the whereabouts of these people, instead of them to react and see how they can get them, subdue them, and crush them. They are talking of security summit, this thing, and so on. But left to me, that is not what we want now. We want a situation where they should be crushed. Because I've always said that the government, of this government has been pursuing shadows. Instead of following real, this thing, the real bandits and and uh, uh, kidnappers, they are busy pursuing shadows, talking of uh, this uh, Sunday day and the Namakana and so on. That is not the issue. They are not acting well. There is a little bit of a favoritism in their dealings, and they are not being honest with us and with Nigeria. And the law enforcement agency, that is the security apparatus, no. Because they know where these families are. They are busy doing selective visits because Gumi said, uh, Sheikh Gumi said that they escorted him, the uh, likes of the police and the military escorted him to where they went to meet the bandits. 
where he was negotiating with Bandi. So the army cannot play that they don't know the whereabouts of these people. He said, instead, they are busy pursuing shadows and allowing these people to make money. And the stand of the government of Katuna is very wrong. When they say they are not negotiating, they are not doing anything, and so on, but they are busy yeah, can I come in there? Because you have been in the army, you understand the modus operandi, and of course you obey orders, you, you, before, you don't ask questions. Um, what do you think the challenge of the army is? Because I'm guessing, and I want to, I mean, I, I'm not in any way trying to play down, uh, you know, the gallantry of our soldiers. They have gone... Uh, you know, to different countries and they have gone for peacekeeping. They used to be known as the best uh, south of the Sahara. But what is going on right now? Why, what do you think the challenge is for not just the, the, the soldiers, but our, our whole security apparatus? Why is this becoming so, some sort of an overwhelming situation for them? When you talk of amnesty and the rivers, you cannot compare that of amnesty of the south south to that of the bandits in the north. You can't compare that. And what we are saying is, look, these are people that have killed. They have killed severally. They have abducted severally. They have raped. They have named. They have done a whole lot of things. So the issue of giving them amnesty for killers, brutal killers and so on, shouldn't come in at all. Look at what is happening in Benue. Look at what is happening in Taraba. Look at what is happening in Enugu. Uh, Look at what is happening in Plato. What of Kassina? What of Zafara, Niger, and Kaduna? These are brutal uh, people doing all sorts of things. Killing people for money. Making people suffer. And some people are saying, no, they, are, they, they should give them amnesty and they should uh, find a way of, of uh, appeasing them and so on. So I don't subscribe to that. But, but how, is that, how, does that, how does that stop the army from doing its job? Uh, are you saying that the army is not doing its job because they are opposed to the amnesty? Or I, I'm trying to understand what the challenge is. Maybe, maybe Peter can help me. Peter, what do you think the challenge is? You see, you see, I stand by what General Danjuma said earlier on. That is like the army is collaborative. They are collaborating with these people. And such things, you, you have to be very careful. That's a hefty allegation. Very hefty allegation for your constituency or your former constituency. To act is what you don't know. They are just keeping quiet, making sure that nothing happens. And doing as if they are colluding, collaborating with them. So they should find a way of sorting out this thing. Hmm. If, if, if the government is not aware, why is it that they are giving them so much comfort for them to operate on? And that's what we are saying. Okay. Um, Peter, as we speak, the insecurity in Kat Katsina State has caused for them to shut down uh, activities or festivities for, um, you know, Salah. And, and, and they're asking that prayers be said uh, on behalf of Nigeria uh, and the states. If the backyard of Mr. President, and I'm sure that the president is going to obviously be part of this festivities, even though they've been canceled, he will be. Uh, if Katsina is also part of the mix and nothing has been done, and we are in July, and this is one of the fastest months in 2021, we're yet to understand if there's a plan, a strategy. We're not even seeing any pattern as to how these issues are going to be dealt with. Do we see celebrating the Yuletide uh, in a safe and secure environment, something that we can really feel and touch? Or uh, should we just, you know, give up and hope that maybe one day, you know, things would change? I mean, because I really don't know. Where, where, where should our hopes lie right now? Well, um, hope is hope is um, hope is dying out. In in, in any any sensible person who looks at the situation will tell you that we are we are, we are anybody who has high hopes for a remedy to this situation in the next one year, two years is probably still asleep. Um, I've, I've heard some of the people defending Mr. President say it is going to take some time for the ammunition that they paid for to be delivered. 
So so that is done. We just have to manage the, the current level of abandonment and insecurity, and that is that's absolute rubbish. In fact, this is not the first time that Casino has been under is seized by these um, terrorists and bandits, as, as, as so people prefer to call them. Um, I remember in, in, even in 2019, it was one of the elections, this sort of bandit thing was going on in Casina. It was difficult for the president to even visit his state for a long time. Um, that this is still happening now just tells you, in fact, I believe the, the, the direct council and is, they, are being, they are being very politically correct with their statements. This is also a statement to me, Mr. President, like, you know, we've lost faith in you, well, let's see, you know, by other means, diplomatically, that we don't feel safe enough to celebrate the Salah festivities. In other words, we believe you're failing us. And, and this is just, it's not just conjecture, um, because there's a way this, this council or this traditional rulers are supposed to speak, not to give credence or allow the propaganda of the terrorists to also gain, gain, um, gain ground, but also pass their message across in a way that those behind the scenes will be able to understand what's happening. There are, there are ungoverned areas where these um, terrorists have now become some form of um, governors, uh, for want of a better word, and, and they, are, they seem to be asking for people to pay taxes, allegedly. Um, and there's a lot happening. So these ungoverned spaces, um, these terrorists are spreading, they're spreading their tentacles. Even the governed spaces were unable to push back on these guys my question is, um, if, if in six months we, we don't see a change, how do we get our leaders to um, step up to the plate? Because I keep asking this question all the time. How do we get these people to listen to us? How do we get them to act? Because the cost of living is rising high. Um, the insecurity is rife. People, cannot, people can barely afford three square meals as it is. The economy is not looking good. We're so indebted. We're poor as a country. Uh, and people still have to look for monies to bail out their friends and families or loved ones who have been abducted on a daily basis, which has now become a business that is empowering these terrorists to continue to spread. How long can we hold together? How long can we keep quiet for our governments to really come to their senses and do the job that we ask them to do? I, I still I still hold the position that nothing will not I mean because I mean to, to a very large extent the government has censored um, the, the, the means by which the general populace can express its displeasure by coming out to protest, which is one of the um, principles of the democracy, or in quote, or should be, or should, or it should be democracy. So you're saying that, so you're saying that we're powerless means, as a people um, and we can... The means that we people can do these things, I'm sorry, Peter, by social media, Peter, or by coming out to protest in public, Peter, these means that we take taking away the government. So it's evident that there is little or no means of expression of our displeasure or our lack of confidence in the So, Peter, system. you're telling me and that as Nigerians, we're right powerless to, to hold our leaders to account. That's what you're telling me, that we're powerless. We cannot hold our leaders to and, account. And, That's and, what you're telling me, that we're in a state where our leaders are not yes. answerable to us. Without missing words, yes. Without missing words, yes. The government is clamping on the social media, um, and then they don't, and they're not allowing people to come out to protest or air their views. How can countries that are displeased with what is happening that are asking for the right to be able to leave the current arrangement or call the government to the shooting table? They are being they are being pummeled um, into the ground. So it's, it's clear that there is there is little or no outlet for us to be able to express our views peacefully and or to pile pressure on the government for them to do the right thing. So as it is, um, it is still we are stuck with the current um, state of things until the next election. Well, on that very sad note, I want to thank you very much. Colonel Chinedua Honda is a former, uh, he's a retired colonel in the Nigerian army. And of course, Peter Epidion is a security expert. Thank you, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for having me. All right. Well, on that note, I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. Uh, don't forget that you can join us on social media. Follow us on Instagram and you can also follow us on Facebook. But you can watch a repeat of this show on our YouTube. Yes, you can go on Plus TV Africa on YouTube and watch a replay of the show. I am Mariana Cole. See you tomorrow.